always on patrol for rabbits, right, Peaches? No shortage of rabbits. Hello and welcome to Soulful Spinning, my channel about creating and using hand spun yarn and all things crafty with fiber. My name is Lisa and I can be found on Ravelry and Instagram as the Soulful Spinner. So I'm most active on Instagram, so you can always PM me there. Uh, I'd love to hear from you there. Or you can always email me as well at soulfulspinning at gmail.com. So today is I think it's July 16th. It's a Friday afternoon here in the Chicagoland area where I'm coming uh, to you from. And it's another overcast, kind of breezy day, threatening to rain. Uh, we've had days and days of this um, kind of overcast, cool, coolish weather, which is, un it's not usual for this area. So uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's been kind of nice, but I'm kind of ready for a little bit of sunshine. I thought I'd pop in here and do a quick episode because I'm going to um, be gone for a couple of weeks um, and I thought I would just pop in here really quickly and just kind of give you an update and talk a bit about what I've been up to. So in this episode I'm going to share with you uh, my spin of the Gulf Coast Native fleece, a sample that I received from a friend, and uh, show you how I'm combing and carding and spinning that up. I also had a happy mail day. I thought I would get some new braids of fiber in the mail. I haven't purchased any processed fibers for a really long time, so that's pretty exciting. I've got some spindle spinning projects, and, um, yeah, and that'll be it. And I have a little surprise for you at the end. So the first thing I wanted to do is I'll give you an update on my uh, hand-spun uh, sweater. So. Uh, Last summer, I had spun up a bunch of Jacob fleece, and I cast on for uh, Heidi Kermeyer's pattern. I think it's called Tea with Bread and Jam or something like that. So it's 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 been in various stages of hibernation, but I have taken it out, and I'm going to finish it before I go because I want to get this done. So when September and October comes and it gets cool, I can have this to wear. So this is my... This is my jumper. I made a gradient. Um, I spun up uh, wool and spun Jacob wool in various shades. And typically with woolen yarn, you've got lots of air and they, they don't weigh, um, <laughs> they don't weigh very much at all. As a matter of fact, the, the, the sweater doesn't weigh very much either. So I've got one entire sleeve uh, knit it up and now I'm working on on this one and I'm using some new needles that I that I received oh about a month ago they're uh, chow gu shorties and they come in this tiny little little package they have two sets um, they have a set that's the larger sizes, I think. These are a US 4, 3.5, all the way to a US 8, which is 5. Point. And you get two sets. Two sets. You get a 2.5 and inch, and I think this is a 3 inch. So they're very short uh, tips, and so you can get a very short short circumference um, knitting. So I have this set and I did order the set, the, the sock set as well. So when I get those on the needles, I'll show you, um, give you my thoughts on, the, on those. I like them a lot. It makes knitting sleeves go a lot faster. I have the longer cables. I'll, there's, uh, I'll put a link down below uh, to a, a video that uh, talks about the the needles a little bit more. Several people have done reviews, but uh, so what 
what it allows you to do is, you know, knit a really small circumference. And it does go quite fast because you just, it just round and round you go. Uh, my only issues is that my hands are on the large size, size, like my, I have a size, this is a size 10 ring here. And so sometimes when I'm knitting, this finger here gets a little cramped. And so I have to take breaks. So it's, it's not ideal. I mean, every method has its pros and cons, right? So you got the magic loop and double points and all kinds of different ways to do it. But um, I'm really hoping I have this done for you next time I see you and washed and blocked. Um, it's wool and spun. It's, um, it's, it's very fuzzy. It's a very light and it'll be interesting to see how it wears. Um, you know, if it pills quite a bit, I have, I suspect that it might need uh, the sweater shaver from time to time, uh, just because I think I under spun it and I under plied it. So I tend to under, under spin and under ply for some reason. I'm always afraid of creating, you know, really tightly twisted rope. So that's that. I thought I'd give you an update on that. And I was happy to hear a couple of you said that you were inspired to make a hand spun sweater out of your, um, your hand spun as well. So it's really good to hear. So that's my, that's my uh, garment. And then, um, so I've been spending this week uh, processing this Gulf Coast Native. And I'll take a, a short break here and insert the video on uh, how I'm preparing that and how I'm spinning it. And then I'll be right back. This is 30 grams of Gulf Coast Native. So what I did with the fleece, I uh, put it on my combs and I just quick uh, combed it, not for a true worsted prep, but just to uh, get the best fibers out of the fleece, clean out any veg matter. Yeah, I got this beautiful cloud. So this is, uh, it's an incredible fleece. It is extremely bouncy. So when you squish it, it just, it's just, it just puffs right. It's like the expanding fleece. So I've got another bat made out of, of another 30 grams. I'm gonna go ahead and card this up on my Clemmis Carter. And then I'm spinning this unsupported or very little supported long draw on my Lendrum. So I thought I would take you along today uh, with my process of uh, spinning up this lovely wool. Yes, yeah, so that's fresh off the combs. I'm gonna go ahead and carve this up. Really reminds me of a very fine Shetland fleece. nice and slow it's very crimpy and so uh, with a very crimpy fleece like this you have to be careful because it could very easily uh, double back on itself and create little neps or coils like kind of coily uh, bits and bobs in your in your bat so you can see how I'll show you on my apron here how crimpy it is and fine. So I try to go slowly. It's another overcast day today in the Chicagoland area. I feel very lucky that we've gotten rain here and I know other places in the country are really suffering. I also like to use this packing brush, hold it lightly down, and it helps pack the fiber into the drum. And again, I'm just I'm just teasing it out, combing it, carding it up here. It's an easy.
The other thing uh, it came with is this brush, which you can also use to help tamp the pack it into the drum. And this also does double duty and sharpens the teeth. Sometimes I just rest my elbow. <laughs> to take it off.
Dad, you're getting tangled up in my, you're getting tangled up in my yarn. How are you? Are you just doing stuff? So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. It'll depend on how many yards I get. I think I'll maybe make a hat. Melissa from Knitting the Stash just had an episode where she talked about Gulf Coast Native. She had received some hand spun yarn uh, from Kim Boyce of Fairly Fiber Fun. And she made this beautiful hat by Isabel Kramer. So I could, maybe I'll swatch and make a hat. I think that would be a really nice use of, the, of this yarn. So I've been getting ready to go out of town. Uh, we're, we take our family vacation every year. We go up to the UP of Michigan and we just stay at a cabin and we uh, do a little fishing and hiking and I always perseverate over what to bring. So I was going through a bunch of my uh, spindle projects just to pick out a few things that I could take. So I thought I would show you a couple of those. So this one This was a, a spindle uh, project in progress that I found that, sorry for the plastic there. So this fiber, this is the last nest that I have. This is an ingle nook fiber bat. So if you're, if you're really lucky and you get on her uh, newsletter, uh, you can maybe snag this type of pro, um, fiber bat. They usually sell out really quickly, but these I bought a couple years ago and I'm spinning it on my, this is a Jenkins Turkish spindle. So here are my um, so those are three, three turtles I took off the uh, spindle and then I was getting kind of creative and I took some of it and I did some spiral ply with this, this is a silk cone from, I think I got this from Webbs. So what I did is I took my singles and I spiral plied it. So let me see if I can show you what this looks like. So 
So I was not, I think I'm going to do the rest of it this way because it was only, I think, three and a half ounces. Yeah, there's the tag. It's only 3.2 ounces. Um, so uh, just to make the most of the yardage, I think I'm going to go ahead and spiral ply the rest of this. And I think it would be really nice in a, a weaving project. So I have a rigid heddle loom. It's a it's a shocked flip. It's not the biggest one. I think it's 24 inches. And I have actually something on there that I need to finish. But I was thinking that when I get back, I might buy a smaller a loom, you know, just to do smaller pieces that would be a little more portable. You know, you tend to always want to go big. You know, oh, I want the biggest loom. I want to make these big pieces. And now I'm thinking I'd like to have maybe a little one that would be a little more portable that I could use in my lap and just make scarves. And I could also sample my yarns to see how they would weave up before I, you know, start a really big project. So I'm looking at the uh, Presto, the Kromsky Presto loom, the little one, the 10-inch. There's not much of a price differential. I think the technology, whether you, whether you get a smaller rigid huddle or a larger, there's the price differential isn't that great. But if you uh, know about that Presto loom, if, if you could let me know in the comments what you think of it, or you know, PM me on Instagram, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. That's, that's the one that I've kind of got um, on my list of ones to check out. So there's a couple of fiber festivals coming up in my area. Uh, one in Michigan in August, the Michigan Fiber Festival. And then there's one in Wisconsin, Wisconsin Sheep and Wool in around Labor Day. I think it's the week after Labor Day here in the States. So I'm gonna try to um, get to at least one of those. So if I do, I'll let, I'll let you guys know. And if you, if you wanna meet me, meet me there, I'd love to meet you in person. That would be so awesome. So yeah, I, 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 sometimes I get these spindle projects and then I don't finish them. So I'm really happy that I'm following through and kind of clearing out some of my stash so I can make room for more. So I got three braids and they're all in the same color family. <laughs> Go figure. Um, the first one is this beauty here. I'm going to take it out of its plastic so you can get a better look at the color. This is from Ingle Nook Fibers. She had an update. It is 50% uh, gray alpaca and then 50% tussa silk. And it's this beautiful, beautiful blues. It's a very turquoise uh, color. She calls it Windex. Let's see if I put it in the further away from the camera, if you can get an idea of the color. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little more. It's a little more turquoise than it's showing up. Don't you love that when podcasters do that? Oh, this isn't really the color. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty true. So this is, what is this? five ounces, I think. It's a lot of fiber. And I find that uh, silk blends tend to spin like silk. You know, the, the silk, the characteristics of the silk sort of take over. Plus alpaca is a very slippery fiber. It doesn't have scales that, so it's a, make for a very elegant yarn, but I think it also would be really nice to blend you know, blend with maybe some naturally colored fleece. So we'll see. I have started spinning this up here. On my little wee Turkish spindles. So these are the two that I'm, they cute. They're like twinsies. <laughs> and this is, um, this is pink ivory. And this is, oh, uh, this was the very first Turkish spindle I ever, I ever received. My husband bought this for me for Christmas. And he couldn't believe the price. He goes, he goes, I couldn't believe the price for this tiny little, tiny little spindle. Uh, but of course, all the engineering and, and care and skill that goes into making it makes it worth it. So I've been having a little fun uh, spinning some of this up. 
I'm trying to put a lot of twist, a lot of twist in the in the yarn and spinning it quite thin. See a little spins and spins and spins. Very fast. And I'm just doing short forward. Still spinning. She's a really beautiful spinner. And then just winding it around. So yeah, that's a really uh, beautiful, beautiful fiber from uh, Mother Macrina over at Inglenook Fibers. She's really talented. I mean, there's no like no dye in the water when you wash it. It's, it's she just really knows what she's doing there. So let me show you the other braids I got. I think it was many, many, I think it was over a year since I purchased a, a braid. I usually like to prepare my own fibers, so. This one is from Corgi Hill. Do you see a theme here? <laughs> so this is from Corgi Hill. And it's salt sea, and it's 80% uh, Polworth and 20% silk. In this one, you can see the streaks of silk in the fiber. It's, it's, it's not real, real well blended. It's this beautiful monochrome gradient. I'm finding that I don't really, I'm not attracted to the braids that are all these multicolors, just because I'm not ever sure how to manage the color. So I tend to like to stick with, you know, a gradient or a single color in a braid. So this is, how many ounces? This is five ounces as well. So I like um, Inglenook Fibers, Corgi Hill. Um, they usually give you more than the standard four ounces or 100 grams, which is really nice because then you have a lot more to work with. You know, even if you just want a sample. So I guess I was a real wool, wool pig because I got one more. And this one is also from Inglenook Fibers. This is six ounces. This is six ounces of organic Polworth. They're pretty. Grays and blues and a little bit of burgundy. I think I'm gonna try a three ply with this. I'm sort of, I've been kind of uh, convinced that maybe I should expand my spinning. You know, I always do two plies. And I guess with three plies, I read that you have to give the singles more twist because when you ply, you're going to lose the twist. I have to research that. Uh, my, my head exploded when I watched the last uh, uh, wool and spinning episode. Rachel, Rachel's just so brilliant. She was spinning Romney. And she, she talked about how to spin to the crimps per inch. And I realized that I was counting my twists per inch incorrectly. <laughs> um, so uh, when you, you can, I'll, I'll put a link to her, um, her latest cast in the description. But I was listening and I realized what a non-technical spinner I am. You know, I just sort of do it by eye or by feel. So I, I'm, I'm happy that way. I think uh, if you're happy with the yarn you're getting, it's okay not to be too technical. But I do admire people that can really get into the weeds and really uh, create a very precise yarn, you know, counting treadles and measuring out lengths of, of yarn and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, check, check her out. Ra Rachel's just a wealth of information. She's fantastic. So yeah, so those are my three, uh, my three new acquisitions. I'm supposed to be getting a hackle uh, from Majorcraft. Uh, but it's back ordered, so I suspect I'm not going to get it till I'm back at work. 
I'm a school teacher and I'm going back on August 9th. So it's my last year. I'm retiring this year from teaching in the classroom. So it's my, my last summer vacation. So, but when I do get the hackle, I want to experiment with some of the uh, braids that I have in my stash and uh, maybe make some comb top, maybe mix, some, mix up some fibers and see what I can come up with. So that'll be a very fun, creative endeavor upcoming. Hi friends, this is future Lisa. Today is Saturday, the 17th of July. And um, I just wanted to pop in here and say goodbye because my microphone I lost power at the end of my video and as I was uh, just editing it this afternoon I noticed that so I wanted to pop in here and just say thank you so much for for watching for supporting for subscribing for commenting and for giving me so much encouragement in the channel I feel like I have kindred spirits out there and uh, soul sisters out there that love wool as much as I do so I'm gonna end this cast with a little uh, piano I've been playing piano for a few months now. I played many, many years ago, I, uh, 30, over 30 years ago, and I had put it aside and stopped playing. But this winter, I uh, opened up the piano and started practicing again. So I have a little song that I recorded, and I hope you enjoy. And just know that I am, uh, uh, well, definitely an amateur. So be kind, <laughs> and let me know what you think. Uh, take care, everybody, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye for now.